Welcome, everyone. I am super excited that you are all here on Awaken and Ascend. I am Jennifer Regular, the host, and I have another very special guest with me today, actually visiting me on Zoom from the San Francisco Bay Area. And this is one who is reaching women who feel disenfranchised from their religious or cultural background to really help them feel empowered and understand some of the new lens of spirituality and our sole purpose for our time here on earth right now. Adina Malvana embarked on this journey from a Muslim background, a path of deconstructing patriarchal and ego-driven belief systems. Her fascination with the interplay between negative energies and their influence on the mental, physical, and spiritual well-being became a driving force for her. It took her on an odyssey that led her in the world of heart-centered entrepreneurship and coaching, launching six-figure spirituality consulting services and a not-so-woo-woo-anymore platform. Adina is a spiritual consultant, founder, and creator of the Unity Collective Consciousness, or sorry, Unity Consciousness Collective, and through her embodied ascension and quantum leap program, she coaches her clients on ascension and plays matchmaker between spiritual seekers and their ideal mentors and services for life-changing experiences. She is also the host of the Into the Light podcast and YouTube channel, also the advocate of the Not That Kind of Muslim campaign on social media. She is also the author of a new book called Ascension is the New Attraction. Adina, I'm super excited that you're here. I cannot wait to get started. I was so excited that you started stumbling on my words. So uh, thank you so much, Jennifer. <laughs> I know that was a lot. It was a long intro, but that was amazing. Thank you. Yeah. For so many areas of my background and experience. So I appreciate you. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And I really did want to share that because it just speaks to the path we're on and the difference between fate and destiny, really. You know, like the way that we're conditioned and brought up to think and behave and be in society and how we're meant to work and the ways that we're meant to learn and, you know, how to show up in the world as our identity, you know, gender wise, culture wise, religious wise, all of the things. And then be able to choose our own path, choose our own destiny, renegotiate our soul's contract, and then really become inspired along that path with some life changing experiences insights that you are now here to share and I can't wait to get started on that but I'm wondering how things actually started for you Adina how did this all come about for you and how were you able to even break through all those patriarchal systems as you called it oh my gosh well yes thank you it's been it's been quite a journey I I mean I'm uh, almost almost 40 now and I feel like I've had like multiple lives multiple chapters going on in my life and um I, you know, I come from a Muslim background, as you mentioned, but I actually wasn't born Muslim. I, I reverted. Yeah, I converted to Islam back when I was 18. So I was very young. And I also had like a, a 14 year marriage. My ex-husband is Egyptian. And um, I was much more, I guess you would say, like conservative nature in, in that tradition uh, for many, many, many years. And uh, I still identify as Muslim and um, just went through a number of like, <laughs> like turmoil in the journey, like different things happening um, with my divorce and new relationships and like going through a whole, you know, spiritual awakening and healing process actually, um, you know, that I would say occurred mostly in the last couple years as I started to, you know, learn more about um, energy work and different modalities and healing things that I be that became really important uh, to me on a spiritual level. So um, I think integrating a lot of new concepts that we're being kind of exposed to with, you know, quantum energy and like new understandings of the way that that consciousness works and what we're really here to do and our soul's purpose, and then combining that with, um, you know, ways in which we can still uh, understand our religious traditions and our practices and the ways in which we, you know, want to like basically keeping the things that, that serve us and, you know, kind of getting rid of maybe some of the programming that, that we feel like doesn't serve us so well. So I feel like, you know, we're all going through this process, like you mentioned, where we're uh, kind of 
shedding away, you know, different beliefs and things that we might have been raised with in our childhood or religions or our cultures. And like, you know, we kind of have to uh, deconstruct a lot of that stuff in the healing journey and, and then kind of build it, build it back up the way that we want to, to feel, you know, most aligned. So that's been a, that's been a, a little bit of my background, you know, just on a spiritual level um, and how I've had to kind of integrate a lot of different, um, you know, understandings of religions and traditions and, you know, different spiritual traditions. I've actually, you know, learned about along the way in the last, you know, 40 years of my, you know, being here on the planet. So I, I, I feel like it's all just um, the ways in which it all comes, comes together for us individually and how we like end up integrating it all into our, you know, lived experience. And that, that really is a reflection of our, our, you know, our genuine soul's purpose here on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. even started a campaign, not that kind of Muslim. Can you tell us yeah. about, about that? Like what's the driving force behind that? And what, what do you mean? What is, what is it all about really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like hashtag not that kind of Muslim because, you know, I get asked a lot, like, okay, what, is, what, what you, what do you believe? Well, that's not really, you know, in a, like, that's not conventional or like, okay, well you do these things, but that's not normal. Or I'm, I'm kind of like, it's a, it's a sort of like a breaking of the mold type of um, hashtag that I, that actually I adopted, um, especially, you know, when it comes to beliefs around, I don't know, uh, you know, things around gender issues or, you know, being, I actually have a, a non-binary gender, non-binary child who's I you know, pronouns are they and them. And, you know, it's like, we just have to move past all of that judgment and, uh, you know, fear and guilt, shame-based programming and adopt a new, a new way of like, I, you know, representing ourselves in the world where it's like, well, you know, so, so many times people would be like, well, you're not Muslim if you believe that. And it's like, well, actually, I feel like we can, um, you know, create that bridge of understanding. And, you know, maybe I'm just not that type of Muslim. And so um, that's originally how it started, because I ended up saying that a lot as I'm having to, like, you know, kind of justify my, <laughs> my beliefs or my actions or what I'm kind of putting out there. And um, it's sort of like, you know, the, like, like, hashtag me too, or, you know, one of these things where it's like, you feel like it's, it's, it's in alignment with how our, our you know, we're evolving and, and, you know, keeping our uh, identity and, and bridging it over to something that, you know, will help people understand that there's another way to, to look at those things. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then evolving in such a way too, that we're not having to, or feel the need to justify anything. Yeah. Right. That yeah. We can- be confident in exactly who we are now, right? It might not even be who we were then or who we're even becoming, but who we are right now, what we stand for and being a full expression of how that's showing up, how that's emerging right now. You know, what when you were sharing there, that actually took me back to when I was at the ashram in Bali. And um, it's mostly based in Vedic practices, but it's not specific to any particular practice per se. It's like welcoming everyone. But I was sitting on the bench and there was like this banner stand up thing beside me and I and I was reading the words and it was about the the line of what was written that stood out for me was not about tolerating each other's differences, rather that we are appreciating each other's Mm. differences. And I was like, Oh yeah, I mean, thinking of it that way, putting it that way, just put a real perspective on how tolerating almost puts like one above the other. Like there's a judgment or just right. tolerating something, you know, like just not really accepting it, but you know, you're just trying to be okay with it. It's like being politically correct or something, right? You know, yeah. just to tolerate it. But then when we can actually appreciate each other's differences, then there's like cultivating this mutual respect, love and understanding and the willingness to understand, you know, what people believe and how they want to live and what choices that they're making and champion that, right? And then just appreciate, I know I grew up in Toronto where it was very multicultural and it gave me a real appreciation of all these different cultures and religions and skin color and people and, you know, um, and yet there was still like the segregation, like even in high school, like there was the door for like the alternative crowd and the door for the preps and the door for the Greeks, the, the geeks, you know, like 
And then there were certain areas of downtown that was like the fashion district or where people um, of different genders would hang out, you know, and it was all just kind of still together and separate at the same time. Right. I mean, even right. during the p pandemic, we were like apart, but together. So there is that sense of solidarity that can happen. And I know you created this whole movement around unity consciousness and brought together yeah. this collective. So I'd love to hear more about that too. Yeah, that's amazing. Cause that, that, that was really what you described as, um, you know, the way that we end up having to understand that we're all different, unique aspects of, of God or source energy or whatever that might be, that this path is not like a, a linear path, like where we are all on a certain trajectory and one person gets to, um, you know, with their ego think, oh, I'm, I'm more advanced or I'm in a better category or a compartment than, than that person. But, you know, I'm going to tolerate or, you know, but rather understanding that we all are like, e you know, equal in this way. And we're all having different experience of, you know, God or consciousness. And, uh, you know, we, we're kind of, we're, we have to break down those barriers where our ego is involved and understand that, you know, if someone else is experiencing something, it's kind of like, if it's true for them, it's, you know, it's true for you. It's not something that, you know, we have judgment or, um, you know, we can impose our own belief systems on others. And so it's very important, uh, especially when we, we talk about, you know, from what I understand, when I hear other people talk about unity consciousness, and we're all kind of these fractals of, of energy and we're all reflections of God like having this human experience. And it's like th those concepts become very important to shed away, you know, the judgment and the compartmentalization problem that, that we create with these, um, you know, these certain barriers and these, I, these labels and, you know, really the othering of that other person. And, and that really is rooted in, you know, the problems with like, um, the illusion of separation, right, where everyone is, uh, like, separate, and, you know, we're all, we're all kind of in, in a competition or in a, um, you know, polarized state, whereas when we start to look at the concept around, you know, breaking down those things, we, we have to move into this more unified vision of, of unity consciousness, where, you know, we break down those separations and uh, deconstruct that problem in order for us to um, you know, heal through what, what those problems have created. So, you know, that is, that is what, you know, brings us on this kind of spiritual awakening mission and, and how we end up, uh, ha like viewing the world and coming into, you know, those, those higher vibrational states where we want to be, you know, uh, not, not in the lower vibrational states, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. when we fall into that spell of, illusion of separation yeah. right and being different or being judged or seeing not being able to see really the connection yeah. and having that disconnect right which essentially creates the idea of separation and mm -hmm. puts pulls people further apart from each other and part of that too is when the ego takes over Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned the ego as well. And that can also be an acronym, which I think really aptly explains how ego can take over. And it's edging God out. God I love of your that. understanding, right? Yeah. God of your understanding or your higher power, but edging God of your understanding out. And when we edge God out, <laughs> our higher power, our higher guidance, our real higher level inner knowing that we experience separation and struggle and disharmony right. and become dispirited essentially as well when others are in their ego and we're into this whole ego battle and when we become dispirited then we, we feel less than that our spirit isn't brought forth our core essence the life that we can feel into to experience more fully becomes muted you know, and yeah. so I love that you're bringing people together and bringing in this idea, ideas and understatement, but this idea of unity consciousness again, where we can come together, where we are different people, essentially, and all spiritually driven, that our spirit is intact, 
that we focus on spiritual wellness and so yeah and I to nourish that mm -hmm. Yeah. And so much of the work is around, you know, that piece of the ego, ego mastery and, you know, like our religious traditions, ancient traditions, er, you know, everything in one way or another, whether we it's been corrupted or distorted or whatever. But at the at the core essence, so much of that work is focused on, you know, controlling like in Islam, we have like the nafs, which is the lower self and you know, the, the rules stem from that, you know, and, and there, you know, we don't discredit the importance of, of that work. Right. And it's really, you know, understanding what that, what that work really looks like and how our egos have, you know, led us, led us a certain way or protected us or, you know, programmed us to keep us safe. But then when we move out of that kind of fear-based protection, you know, program, and we move into, you know, healing, healing, healing our heart, for example, or focus on, you know, the importance of doing that kind of work and getting in alignment and, you know, the letting go of the shackles that the, the ego protection has on us. And then also, uh, you know, integrating it in, in that process so that we don't, uh, you know, have this kind of, um, unhealthy relationship with whatever we're trying to suppress in ourselves. I mean, that really becomes where people talk about, you know, doing the shadow work or the, uh, go, you know, going through that dark night of the soul or whatever that might be for people and, and really having to understand ourselves on a deeper level and do that introspection and that inner work, you know, finding inner love and, you know, unconditional love for our own selves in that process. And then, you know, integrating where our ego has served us and how we're going to become a more complete, you know, person uh, and, and feel like we are operating from that place of authenticity rather than um, an unhealthy, you know, whatever, wherever our ego has maybe kept us in a wounded state. Right. So, so many people talk about that, you know, <laughs> when we're, when we're, when we're doing this work and how, how it all kind of works and, you know, the processing that it takes in order to really um, kind of do that ego mastery work. But in reality, I mean, that's, that I think is what our religions have been trying to teach us for so many centuries, right. <laughs> to do it yes. anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. That ego mastery and also spiritual self mastery and a lot of people right. talk about the spiritual journey, right. And the journey of self-actualization, which can sometimes be seen as like the self-improvement model and also right. self-realization where we actually just release anything that's not actually us and realize who we truly are. Mm -hmm. And so that makes me really curious about your spiritual awakening, Adina. What what did that look like for you? How did you experience that? Yeah, well, what you described there when we talk about, you know, finding our truest sense of self or our, I mean, some people will talk about, uh, you know, divine blueprint or, um, you know, getting, uh, eliminating distortions or things like that in our field. And like, it's, it's, Islamically, there's a concept called our fitra state, which is our natural alignment to to God. And we're all kind of born in that state. It's sort of like, you know, we're all kind of pure souls and we have um, that connection, but then we're programmed with all of this, these distortions and these different things that, that happen to us and the traumas that kind of create us, you know, farther and farther away from that. And so um, that process of coming into alignment and, uh, and you know, coming back to oneself, re you know, really, that is the most important work uh, that we that we do, you know, when we're talking about shadow work or understanding our traumas, like I became very, you know, kind of trauma informed <laughs> along my way and understanding like, you know, where our attachment styles from childhood created the, you know, negative patterns and the programs that are running, you know, that basically are pulling us farther and far away from that state until we, you know, kind of learn those lessons and then start to heal through to go back into that, um, you know, more alignment state. And and that's really where um, we find ourselves and our, you know, our, our sense of self and our truest um, form. And, um, you know, that's a whole journey where it's almost like the harder we've had it, you know, so many people have such a hard time, like we've had you know, terrible childhood, terrible experiences, you know, very, you know, especially like 
you know, people who identify as light workers and who are coming here to do this work, it's almost like, you know, you've been, you feel like you've been put through so much. And in reality, that just creates, you know, that's your kind of capacity to heal and then, you know, experience that uh, the benefit that comes with doing that work is, is opened up for you once you, once you start to really, um, you know, come into alignment and do that work. So it's all, it's all based off of like, you know, healing through our, our traumas or, you know, people talk about regulating your nervous system or, you know, healing your, your mind, body, soul connection, you know, all of that stuff is so important, uh, to, in order to come back into this, um, you know, align state of alignment with who we truly are. Right. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We're all on a different kind of transformational journey. And yet through the transformational journey, kind of see the same things happening. It's almost like it takes a certain order, you know, there, this awareness that happens, this awakening, this greater self-awareness, greater awareness of what's actually happening and, you know, questioning existence and meaning and purpose and all those bigger life questions, you know? Yeah. And really getting to know ourselves really, really well. And then there's this rite of passage, you know, where we do get initiated on the healing path and go through some things that feel really adverse in childhood and adulthood as we develop and grow in the human world, we're also developing spiritually and having that soul growth as well. And moving through this rite of passage that leads to a rebirth, you mm -hmm. know, and into a new way of being and a new state of being or a new state of thinking or blazing a new trail, you know, for our lives and for others. And I'm curious what kind of form that took because transformation for me means transcending form, what was before and what is now and what's still becoming. And so have you always been into the spirituality consulting work and so on, or was, did it take, did your work take a different form before and who you were? Before? Yeah, that's, yeah, actually, you know, I was in, I have a, I have a corporate background. I've been in, um, you know, corporate enterprise sales, uh, software and technology, um, for over 10 years. And, um, it wasn't until about two years ago. I, and I also had, you know, really bad corporate burnout, kind of like, typical, like overachieving, you know, in my masculine energy program to do, 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 and keep kind of on this hamster wheel and getting my career, my career, you know, and all this stuff. And I, I was, I had like a, a, was laid off from my, my corporate job and had to, you know, get out of a rut and, and ended up, you know, becoming more in alignment with what my, my sole purpose was, you know, and kind of, taking taking it into that new direction in order to feel more fulfilled because I just you know so so much of me didn't want to go back and go go into that hustle and grind culture um but I took that the skills that I you know have with marketing and sales and things like that to build my own you know business and now doing this consulting work is all about you know putting people with the right you know uh, healers, products, services at the right time in their spiritual journey. So that led me to, yeah, create my embodied ascension program where um, I, every week I have different uh, expert partners who are speaking on all of these different interesting issues like quantum energy healers, plant medicine specialists, you know, coaches and practitioners of all kinds, different modalities and spiritual traditions. So, um, you know, every week we're, we're talking with different experts and, you know, kind of um, accelerating the spiritual awakening process. So people who are um, like me, who are really interested in, you know, maybe breaking out of their uh, typical, you know, religious route or who are open, open, becoming more and more open-minded into other, you know, modalities and things can end up, um, you know, improving and getting through this process a lot faster. So um, it's all about helping other people who are looking for the the ways in which we can, you know, build our business in this direction, build your personal brand, you know, you know, have different partnerships with products and services that are in alignment with this spiritual path and, um, and, and, and all helping support each other in that process. So it's really been a, a great journey for me. But yeah, I, I definitely was in that kind of corporate burnout, <laughs> you know, career <laughs> um, for many, many years as I was, you know, doing all that hustle and grind. So that was a big part of, you know, where I took a turn to do to do this more spiritually led work myself. 
I love that. I love that so much and how quickly you were able to do it. You know, once you got in touch and realigned with what you, who you were and what you're meant to do and then dedicate yourself to that, how quickly the momentum builds, how quickly you recovered from burnout, like in the last two years, like, come on, I guess. Yeah. Pretty exceptional, Adina. Yes, thanks. Well, we can make it happen. We're we're quantum leaping, we're jumping timelines, we're getting in alignment. (laughs) And, you know, manifestation and all this stuff is starts to, uh, you know, once you once you dedicate and you make a decision, and you can see the vision of yourself and and build, you know, towards it, things can happen very quickly, you know, the universe opens up all of the connections we need, everything that we, you know, can be brought in uh, that we're, that our soul is calling for. Cause it's like, it might've been quick cause it was two years, but you know, I've, I've been on a spiritual journey, you know, for over 20 years mm-hmm. first, you know, when I was a teenager and, you know, ha- and then I have two kids and I had a divorce, you know, so it's like, I feel like all throughout it was my soul just layering in more and more, you know, experiences and lessons just to get me to where I am today and like, get me on this, you know, best and highest timeline and like, you know, be really embody that, uh, that energy, because, you know, it has been a long journey of this, like, (laughs) going through this and that, and, you know, and then you really look back and reflect on every, every little piece, and, you know, kind of what it gave you, you know, and in this process, and where all the where all the doors closed and another one opened and, and then you start to just, you know, operate from that place of, of just knowing and kind of surrender to, to what's going to happen and that you're going to be, you know, held and supported just pursuing the thing that's calling you the most. Yeah. Yeah. Like what else is possible? And that layoff created the space to free your spirit and direct the life that you were meant to live, you know, and this has become my motto because I've seen it over and over again in my own life experience and every guest that I bring on that there's some way that opens us up to higher possibilities, you know, greater possibilities, expansion. And I love that so much and the work that you're doing. And I'd love for people to have an opportunity to connect with you. So where would they find you, Adina? Yeah, the best place um, to connect with me, my my website is www.adinamovana.com. Also, I'm active on all the social platforms, mainly Instagram. I think that's where most people can find me easiest. I, you know, on my page there, and um, I'll have I have things posted about my programs and um, Facebook as well. Is a good place. And I actually recently just started TikTok, but I mean, <laughs> we're all we're all trying the the different things. So. Um, that's been an interesting thing. I started going live and doing those things, but, um, the, for, for my videos and for my guests that I bring on my show, uh, my YouTube channel is also, uh, into the light with Adina Movana. So I recommend that because I like to interview to all kinds of different, you know, people who are doing this, this type of spiritual work and, uh, and just, yeah, create a space for where, you know, we're all, we're all able to express the work that's being done. So that's a good yeah. spot too. bring us <laughs> all into the light. I love it. Into we're going to have, <laughs> have all of those links in the show notes and Thank ways to so connect much. with myself as well. And you'll find, you know, some gifts that, because you all deserve a gift. <laughs> There's a free guide in there for living your passion and purpose and a soul care guide too. If you're going through a time right now and you want to find solace in the everyday then there's some guidance in there as well so that's also in the show notes Adina is there anything else that you'd like to share with us I don't I I love it I'm I'm just so thrilled to be on here today Jennifer and I I think uh the work you do is amazing finding our soul purpose I think that was the common theme that we've been talking about today and the importance of um you know doing that work and holding true to yourself and shedding away all the layers of, uh, you know, limiting beliefs and, you know, whatever patriarchal or ego-based problems you might be having. I mean, it's, 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 it's definitely there for you. Our soul is, you know, calling us to do this work. And um, it's so important right now, all of feels, you know, we're in the greatest global consciousness awakening that humanity has ever seen. And all of us are just, um, ready to be lit up by this. And I think there's so much potential and people are, are seeing it more and more every day in our lives. So I just appreciate the opportunity to, to share with you today and um, excited to connect and, and get us all in alignment with what's happening. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And really start gaining some momentum and 
you know, support each other through these accelerated changes right now. So I really appreciate everything that you shared to support that as well. Yes. And I'm so grateful for each and every one of you have been, have been listening and watching on Awaken and Ascend. I can't wait to see you again next time. Bye for now. Thank you.